it's very, very encouraging this morning uh, for all sorts of reasons. Um, but one of them being, I've been really blessed. I've been really, 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 really good. When you know you're going to preach, you, 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 you look who's leading and you think, how long will it take? And, um, and then you wonder how, this, how the worship will go and you wonder about all sorts of different things. And, uh, um, and you begin to realise that the Holy Spirit is in control. And whatever occurs, he's there. To, to lead and to inquire and to bless and to move us forward in what he wants us to do. And, and I'm very, very encouraged because when I first knew I was going to be speaking. He's opening the door and shutting it whilst we speak. <laughs> Who is it? There's nobody there. There's nobody there. <laughs> That's done that twice. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, when that door opens, it means the Holy Spirit wants to come in. Yes. And the people who are concentrated see the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's stopped now, you see. Yeah. Just, it's, it just gets lonely, it just wants a bit of attention. So if, if it's the case, then you do that, and then it's, it is a piece for the rest of the service. It won't open again, unless you're not listening properly. And then you've got to remember to listen. There we go. Um, as soon as I, I knew I'd be speaking today, actually, I thought of speaking next week, so it was even further, further back. Uh, I, I knew what the Lord wanted me to talk about. He wanted me to talk about allotments and gardens. Not just the physical ones, but the spiritual ones too. Because I don't know if you noticed from the scripture in um, Revelation 19 that refers to a garden. Did you notice that? He didn't. I did though, because I was looking for it. And it talked about a wine press. And the only place a wine press would be would be in the in, in the vineyard, in the garden. So th th there are areas of our life that we're not really aware of that God's interested in, but he wants us to bear fruit. Uh, right through scripture, I'm not going to do everything, but if you uh, if you remember when the children of Israel went into the promised land and they, they beat the Philistines and the Amorites and the Elamites and the Girgashites and the Dismantites and the Lowites and the Highites and they, 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 they beat them all and then God told uh, Joshua, divide up the land and it was divided into twelve. If you, if you, back in your Bible, sometimes look, you can see these lines going across Israel and you think, what that's all about? That's the allotments. And he gave people the size of the allotment that fitted in with their size, where they were at. And if it's a, if it's a, a, a if we make it spiritual now, if it's a, a new Christian, then the allotment will be relatively small. The expectations are just that you will start to grow, start to grow. But as we grow, then our allotment increases, and God's expectation increases. God comes to the garden. If you go back to Genesis, he came into the garden. Why? Not to look for fruit, which is what he looks for now. He came to fellowship with, with Adam. It was a place of fellowship. It wasn't a place of toil. Food just grew on the trees and they would take it down, they would eat it. They didn't have to go shopping. They didn't have to try and make condensed milk. <laughs> they, 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 they just ate the food that grew, the berries, the things etc etc there was no effort involved the effort came afterwards after the fall and the ground then was cursed things changed at that point that we can't understand but God wants to get that back into that place where after a hard day you sat in your garden you're having a drink of orange juice and and and, and he just walks around the corner and he says have you got a spare chair come on let's have a chat how's your day been how's it been going and that's what they want, and we can do that now. We just taught them to pray with him and to, and, and to, and to listen to what he has to say. Yeah, it, it says in, in verse um, 15, he treads the wine press of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. There's a judgment that will come now within the garden. 
because God will come as as we've seen in um, so many parables that Jesus and stories that Jesus gave that uh, he comes and he's looking for fruit and the challenge to me was how fruitful am I now um, Beatrice when she got up she quoted scripture she's good at that and the first scripture said if, if, if you, you need to dwell in me and I will dwell with you and my first scripture this morning is John chapter 15 which is exactly where that is taken from and for me that's so encouraging because when, I wasn't sure I, I, I was thinking this is too simplistic this is too you know the, but, but I, I, then, then the Holy Spirit says no it's just, just what people need to hear today it's just what you need to know today Alan just what I want to reveal through you and uh, and, and, and so I, I believe as we just go through these next 15, 20 minutes, the Holy Spirit is going to speak to me and hopefully through to you too. John 15 is about the vine and the branches. It's about the Father being the gardener. It's, Jesus says, I am the true vine and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it may be even more fruitful. God doesn't want us just to meander along. He wants us to be coming to him to be pruned. To have certain things taken away so we can be more fruitful. And he'll take away things that are dead. Things that shouldn't be there. It just takes them out. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine, we must keep in touch with Jesus. We must have that relationship uh, renewed, strengthened, revitalized whenever possible. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. You know, <clears throat> a few Muslims have said to me, where does it say in the New Testament that Jesus said he was God? Does it say it? Don't, don't come back with an answer now. The, the, the best ones here, especially if you've got a little bit of a West Indian or, 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 uh, thing, because he says, uh, I am divine, you are the branch. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesus says, I am divine. There you go. You can't remember. <laughs> if you me, and I am you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withered. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. He looks to us for fruit. He looks to see what's growing on us. He looks to see what's impacting our lives and how we are fulfilling his purposes. If we go from John right back to Genesis chapter 2, um, it says, Now, uh, verse 8, uh, now the Lord God had planted a garden east of Eden. Did you realize you a lot went on as you gardeners that uh, the Lord planted the garden in Eden? He planted it. Now, that tree there, not that tree there. Marjorie was telling me about forestry for about for a walk yesterday and uh, they've cleared it and it's, and it's so much better now where we were walking because it's not just a, uh, a, a, a load of nature's been left to grow but it's been, it's been cut back and pruned and, and, and taken out and it just looks so much brighter and so much, much more um, inviting. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Havilah, uh, where, there is no, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx are there are also there. 
The name of the second river is Gihon. It winds through the entire land of Kush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It, it, it runs along the east side of Asher. Uh, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. It went, like my garden, or our garden, a, a few metres by a few metres, this garden was huge. It was, it was, it was colossal. There's four rivers there named uh, that come up good. That come out in, into that garden, so it was a it was a massive place that God blessed Adam and Eve with. It wasn't just a little allotment where they had to dig around. They didn't have to dig around, as I mentioned before. The food, the trees. It was a mature garden. The trees were provided for food. The fourth, uh, sorry, the Lord took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to work it and to care for it. So he's just going to work the garden and look after it and eat all the food. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and when you eat from it, you will certainly die. They could eat from the tree of life, it tells us later, and that was why he was banished from, the, from there. The fall, in the next chapter, the servant was more crafty than anyone else. Said to the woman, did God really say he mustn't do that? The woman said, yes, he did. He said it. He said it. That was her answer. We may eat from the fruit of the garden, but God did say, you must not eat the fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. She knew. Adam had told her she knew exactly what she was doing. But it, but it was a, 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 a transferred command that was given to Adam. The, uh, the, the serpent says to her, You will not surely die. The serpent says to the woman, For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Their innocence went. It was done away with. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Who planted the trees? God, God the Father planted the trees. They're hiding. He knows where he put all the trees. Mm. He's not a forgetful God. He remembers everything. He knows everything. He knew exactly where they were. He knew exactly what had happened. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? See, Eve's off the hook already. It's, it's Adam, he's calling, but where are you? Adam, where are you? And I believe the Lord is saying to us, saying to me, Alan, where are you? Alan, why aren't you getting on with this over here? Alan, this is your allotment, this is your garden, this is where I put you to, 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 to be the gardener, just, just to work the land and the fruit will grow. Alan, where are you? Talk to me, talk to me. And God's saying to us all, where are you? I, I want to talk to you. How's the garden going? Are you dealing with the weeds? Are you, are you, are you, are you seeing the growth that we need to have uh, in there? See, it's not just this physical garden, it's a spiritual, the place where God has put us. And we're all in a place. We all are in a position where we should be serving God and doing that. And I believe that's what the Lord's saying to us here. It's an old message in many ways, but it's actually the basic message. We should be trusting God. We should be obeying God. We should be following Jesus. We should do what Jesus said. The, the, some people don't understand. They think they're, 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 a, they're a Christian because they go to church. Anybody can go to church. Doesn't that make you a Christian? A Christian is a follower of Christ. Someone who does what Jesus said we should do. Someone who is obedient uh, to what he wants us to do without counting the cost because we've learned that through trusting Jesus comes fulfilment in life. 
And it, and it blesses us and it shows us the way forward. And a man said, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. And God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman you gave me, you put her, you put her here to be with me. You did it, she gave it to me. She gave me some fruit of that tree and I ate it. Now the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you've done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me. Oh, really had me on, on okay. And I ate it. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all animals. You will crawl on your belly. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and her offspring will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. The woman said, you are you're, you're in childbearing. The, the, the pains will be severe. To Adam, he said, because you listen to your wife. It's terrible stuff, this. <laughs> Adam said, because you listened to your wife and ate, ate the fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. Can you see what's happening here? It was going down from, from Adam to Eve to the serpent. And now we're having the ground being cursed. If sin is not dealt with, it grows, it multiplies, and it holds us down if we don't deal with what we should be dealing with we will not achieve our potential and when god comes to look for the fruit it won't be there because it's been spoiled by the birds of the air and the and, and the thorns and the thistles and the rocky places by the sweat of your brow you'll eat food until you return to the ground from where you came Adam named his wife Eve because she became the mother of all, all living. The Lord made garments of skins for Adam and Eve and clothed them. Their first covering was leaves. That's how we know it was. Uh, what, got, what tree did he get the leaves from? It's in there. Yeah, big tree. Big tree. Yeah. But they, God gave them uh, a garment to clothe them with. I can't confirm it from scripture, or maybe it's in there somewhere, but I think it was the a lamb. Mm. A lamb that was taken and that was the covering to hide the sin. Mm. A picture of Jesus dying for us on the cross, giving everything that he had for us so that we could be covered so that we can serve him and where we go. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife. The other variation, I, I, I do have funny thoughts. I wondered whether they were sort of translucent. When the glory of God left them, you could sort of see inside of the heart beating and, and the kidneys working and, and all that sort of thing. So the garment of, was actually a garment of skin that's what it says, a garment of skin. Anyway, that's just a thought again. I can't find that from scripture, so don't tell anybody that one. The man is now be become like one of us, it says. That is a reference to God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They say that they're having a conversation here. The man has been now become like us. He can tell the difference between good and evil. In order to reason this out. Because that's how he's made us. We were made to be in his image. And he said we, he must not be allowed to eat out, uh, reach out his hand and take it also from the tree of life and eat it and live forever. It was something that had to be dealt with quickly. So the Lord banished him from the, the Garden of Eden to work the, the ground from which he had been taken. And he drove the man out. He drove him out. If you go back to verse 15, it says, The Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden. But now he's driven him out. When the Lord is dealing with our lives and, and directing us where to go, what to do, how to do it, all of the detail that he gives to, to, to the people who serve him, 
Um, it, 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 it's, it's something of a blessing. But at the end time, it's going to be a case of, I don't know you. I never knew you. Get away from me. He drove them out of the, of the, the garden. It's so critical that we make sure that our lives are conformed with the, with the uh, will of God. Uh, and I'm not preaching at you this morning. I'm preaching to, to me. Because I know that I trip up so often. I know that, 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 that I exert my energy sometimes on things that I'd be best, best not doing. Simply not because they're evil, but because they take away the primary place of Jesus being central and being the one whose name is mentioned at home, who we, who, who we talk to whenever we have a meal because it's him that supplied it. Yeah, those, those words up there, when he began to breathe, that's what it was, wasn't it? And I, I thought about it as well. When he began to breathe and the resurrection came, well, we are to be part of that resurrection. We need to be breathing with the breath of God, with, it, with, with all that the Lord pours into our lives. If we, if we jump back into the New Testament, yeah, I'll just tell you this bit there, we'll close. Um, Jesus is mistaken for someone else. It's the early on the first day of the week, it's still dark. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been moved from the entrance. So she went running back to Simon Peter and the other disciples, uh, the other disciple of Jesus, which is John, and said they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple, John, raced back to the tomb. They got there, and then they came away because Jesus wasn't there. Then the disciple, uh, now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw the two angels in white seated where Jesus had been, one on the head, one at the foot. They asked the woman, why are you crying? They knew why she was crying. Why did, why did um, people know the answers to the question they ask? But it's begin, it begins to take us down. How honest are we about where we're at? How do we realise just where we are? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. She's there, that's Jesus there. But she didn't realise it was Jesus. Didn't realise he was there. And again, just to focus for a few moments, we need to know that he's there. Whatever we're doing, he's there. He's watching us. He wants to be part of what we're doing. He wants to be that best friend to us so that he's not excluded from anything. Who are you looking for, Jesus said. Thinking he was the gardener, she assumed, she didn't recognise him, she assumed that he was the gardener because he looks like a gardener. He is the vine. We are the branch. So if you've carried him away, tell me where you put him. I will, go, I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and cried out with a bold eye. She knew it was Jesus. She knew he was there. And that's how it is with us. He's, he's just there. I can remember years ago, I can't remember the name, girl's name, her family name was Reed. And she was given a testimony at a Christian camp in Scarborough, uh, talking about how Oh, she knew the Lord and, uh, and she, she'd gone away so many of us do it, for whatever reason away from where we should be and, uh, and she, she, she had a phrase she said I realised later that Jesus was always there like the wallpaper when you first put the wallpaper up oh yeah lovely wallpaper nice wallpaper Marge we, we got the, a compliment from the guy who lives behind us. You know, our garden is gone. Yeah. He, uh, he came and said, oh, I like the wallpaper you put up. We've got nice neighbours. <laughs> but she said it was, it was like that. And it is. Eventually, the, the wallpaper is invisible. You just don't notice it. But it's always there. Never moves unless we determine that it will. And it's the same thing this morning. 
He's not waiting for you at your house. He's not waiting to sit in the car with you to go home. He's actually here now. He's saying, listen to Alan. He's made a load of noise out of next to nothing. But actually, he's hit on one or two things that are real. And we just need to respond to him. Let's just pray. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are the gardener. I pray that you allow me to get rid of the weeds. That you allow me to get the hard places removed. That you allow me to make sure the seed goes into good ground. I pray for my brothers and sisters this morning that as we get on with our lives over the uh, next few hours, days, weeks, months, I pray that we will not just leave you abandoned as part of our heart of our lives but we will take you and place you in that place where you are central where your purposes will find fulfillment we ask you lord for your glory